All right, everyone, we're gonna get started. Um, good morning, and thank you for joining us for this month's webinar. Uh, build your automation fabric to reshape, or to innovate um, and reshape your digital destiny. Um, I'm Austin Chandler, Senior Content Manager at Worksoft and your host for today's webinar. Today's presentation will be recorded and a link to the on-demand session will be available for those who are unable to attend or those who wish to share or review the information. Due to a large number of participants, lines will be muted. Um, we'll answer some questions at the end of our presentation. Um, you can use the questions feature to submit a question, and if we don't get to yours um, due to time constraints, we'll send you an email and, we'll, and we will make sure to answer your question for you. Um, now, let me introduce today's presenters for you. Um, Lawrence Rankin is Worksoft's head of product. Lawrence brings 25 years of enterprise software experience in a variety of industries focused on strategy, operations, and digital transformation programs for global software consulting and managed service businesses. Um, and uh, we've also got Leslie Joseph, and Leslie Joseph is a Forrester Principal Analyst. Leslie serves technology executives through research and advisory that focuses on enterprise applications, technology platforms, automation, cinnamon, citizen development, and the future of work. He has extensive experience with helping technology buyers align tech strategies with business goals to make smarter choices around building and running their strategic portfolio of application platforms. Um, today, they will be discussing how organizations can build an automation fabric that compels organizations to focus on process digitization, harmonization, and optimization, providing a resilient foundation for infusing, infusing machine intelligence into operational processes. Um, without further ado, I'll turn things over to Lawrence. Austin, thanks very much. And, and, and thanks everybody for joining this webinar today. I'd also like to welcome uh, Leslie. Uh, really, really pleased to have you um, join us on this webinar today. And in, in particular, the, uh, the fireside chat at the end. So I think you know, from an agenda perspective, I'm going I'm to spend a little bit of time just walking through um, you know, a workshop perspective on uh, the automation fabric um, and connective automation. And as I go through that, I'll probably take about 10, 10 to 15 minutes uh, just to walk through that. And then we'll switch over to, uh, to Leslie, who will put some context around really what is the automation fabric? How should I be thinking about it? And then we'll get into, um, into some Q&A. So as we go through this, please do think about the questions that you may have. Um, that can then be you know, you know, teed up to Leslie or myself, um, and we'll be happy uh, to go through them. So if we if we move into the sort of the first slide, when we think about you know building a, um, your automation fabric to innovate faster, you know contextually it's 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 all about being able to drive continuous transformation, continuous change by breaking down um, you know the process automation silos. We've heard in the past about you know, islands of automation where you have you know, disparate tools and functions being, you know, being positioned to deliver certain capabilities in the organization, but it's, but it's separated, it's disparate by, by nature. So when we think about breaking down process to automation silos, we think about more, more modern organizations absolutely needing to identify ways to do things better, faster, and more efficiently by applying emerging technologies to optimize and quite frankly, streamline those business processes. Um, particularly it's never been more important than it is today, particularly when you think about you know, a turbulent, turbulent economy, you know, high inflation, there's a talent shortage, the pace of change, I mean, the pace of change um, is, is, is relentless. Um, going through major transformations as many, many organizations are, and there's a real demand. Um, it's never been um, more pressing today to deliver an ROI um, and better customer experiences you know, in the shortest possible time frame. So that kind of tees up almost like that, the hand we've been dealt as a, a set of challenges, and therefore we have to break down some of those silos to be able to you know, string together this tissue that we can go accelerate. So if we think about unlocking um, innovation, and we'll move to the next slide to talk a little bit about this. Um, one of the key um, sets of priorities, I think, for a modern executive is how do I unlock innovation with process understanding? Um, yeah, we want to be able to provide, and businesses want to be able to provide to their organization a clear line of sight and a journey map to where that destination is. Um, we need to be able to think about process discovery with intelligent automation that enables us to innovate faster. 
And some ways that executives um, are positioning their organizations to address these priorities are by engaging in process understanding, you know, visualization of the data and using AI to inform some of those business decisions. We can think about large organizations, they have so much data, they have so many processes, they have all these different orbiting systems that support their processes. You need some intelligence um, and some AI to be able to you know, inform on those business decisions. You know, unifying disparate data um, to increase that visibility and reduce the inefficiency, um, whilst all the time thinking about ensuring compliance. You know, Automation, um, it's been a topic for the last you know, three years or so um, about you know, really being able to automate as much as possible to drive that efficiency um, and embracing process excellence. You know, those methodologies to help innovate and accelerate an organization's growth. Underpinning this, governance, risk and compliance at every stage um, is an absolute key you know, for the modern executive. Um, when we think about urgency, you know, um, we'll move to the next slide because I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the case for the automation fabric. Um, as I say, Leslie's going to drill into some of the detail around the automation fabric. But what, you know, from our perspective, you know, we see the automation fabric as something that can connect disparate automation tools to break down those silos and drive some better business outcomes, improve process visibility to uncover potential optimization opportunities and to accelerate the transformation. We want to be able to drive operational efficiency, which reduces errors and the associated risk. And you know, one of the key things that every organization faces right now is you know, they have talent. They need to liberate that talent to focus on higher value work. Um, and the reason for that is because people are, from a customer experience standpoint, particularly internally, you know, this is a huge, um, yeah, a huge metric that organizations are chasing. And we need to be able to enable that continuous change and that innovation at speed. As you can see on the right hand side here, a quote from uh, Levi Strauss, CFO, everything that can be automated should be automated. And that is a guiding principle that many of the organizations and senior executives that I speak to um, are reiterating um, across, across their orgs. Moving on to the next slide. Um, so, so how do you prepare an organization's automation fabric? Um, from a technology perspective and from our organization's uh, perspective, yeah, we know that the ERP, the Enterprise Resource Planning Solution, um, remains the lifeline for the business. It's the big back-end you know, um, you know, infrastructure that really supports every aspect, uh, every aspect of the business. It's a key component and change management starts here. It starts with process understanding that goes beyond the technology. Um, yeah, it facilitates those data-driven decisions in a day-to-day -day basis with real-time business insights. As a central core to this, yeah, it has to integrate well with those orbiting systems. Now we think about, yeah, when we think about an ERP, we think about yeah, with SAP, Oracle, yeah, I, I guess um, name your flavor. Um, but these orbiting you know, subsystems that, that span um, an organization's infrastructure are absolutely critical to the success of the business. Um, you know, a quote from um, one of our customers, Microsoft, that, you know, it doesn't have a single process that begins or ends in SAP, but most, if not all, um, you know, traverse it. So, you know, it's a key component, um, you know, that starts an organizational transformation. And when we think about this, you know, the visibility and the transparency, the key here is really to be able to build out um, a process excellence competence. You know, the reason for this is it will help you go faster um, as you know where your starting point is. And it yields an organizational culture that's primed for change. Um, when we look at this, it will help accelerate transformations it builds confidence around when I'm thinking about my core areas that I'm building an organization that's primed and ready um, to take on a transformation activity. We can focus on what it's going to get to what it will take to get there. And it will also identify things from a process excellence standpoint. You know, what I don't need to take with me. You know, many organizations think they'll just you know, lift and shift everything they've got and work on you know, um, optimizing later. The mistake there, I guess, is that you know, 
if you lift and shift everything into the new world, then you're only going to be starting another transformation program to reduce that um, as you move forward. So preparing an organization um, you know, to leverage the, you know, the automation fabric, I would, I would argue is you need to start off with process excellence as a key, um, as a key competence. Starting early, consider it um, getting your house in order before any major change or many, you know, any major um, transformation exercise. If we go to the next slide, you know, some of the challenges um, that we've seen that get solved with connective automation, you know, understanding our as as processes, this is absolutely critical. You know, when I talk to organizations around um, process understanding, many organizations that you know, will, will, will tell us they have a clear picture of what their business processes are. The reality is it's somewhat different, but by, by being able to capture this, prior to starting any major transformation or upgrade yields a huge uh, saving in um, in maintenance costs post change um, siloed automation prevents you know delivery of full roi because it's coming in different pockets of the organization you know a key takeaway here really is that you know we must ensure that business process you know work and the automation for those processes remain resilient you know, I won't go through the um, the stats on the slide here. Suffice to say that you know process understanding is a clear priority in 2023. There are significant savings that can be made by embracing process understanding with in with intelligent automation. If we move on, one more slide. <clears throat> Yeah, as I, as, I, as I kind of mentioned, you know, you know, when we think about artificial intelligence in the context of this, organizations large and complex um, have a lot of data sources and have a lot of really, really insightful information that they can bring together. Weeding out what's important to an organization is, is absolutely critical and leveraging the benefits of, of AI to drive this um, are key. It will enable you to have um, almost like a, a process consultant that will help you with your process understanding. It can also help you identify opportunities for automation and optimization um, and to project those potential gains that you will see. You know, monitoring in real time and tracking tangible value of your digitization efforts will enable you to have a clear picture of your coverage, whether it's the process coverage, whether it's automation coverage, um, so that it will then identify for you areas that you can further automate or further optimize. So thinking about next level insights um, you know, in an organization to aid business decision-making is, is, is absolutely critical. So when we think about um, taking a holistic approach to process excellence, um, one of the things that, um, that works off, you know, built over the last several years, was the connective automation platform. Um, we see this as the connective issue um, and the core enabler for uh, the automation fabric. You know, some of the key must-haves um, as part of building out from a technology stack um, this, this automation fabric is thinking about no code, thinking about having an API first strategy, um, being AI driven. You know, the assets that you build in one point need to be usable and shareable across Across all assets, um, and quite frankly, the, the the platform you use for the automation fabric should absolutely be platform agnostic. So whether it's SAP, whether it's Oracle, whether it's Web, Mainframe, or anything in between, um, it's it's a key consideration for building out your 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 automation fabric. And as I mentioned, you know, being able to understand your processes de-risk those changes that you make as you navigate or transverse your your transformation program de-risking anything before it migrates is critical to the success um, of your business and then ultimately on an ongoing basis being able to optimize those processes to adapt to change more readily so having a process excellence um, framework underpinning um, it under, underpinning this is is, is absolutely critical um, if we go on to you know, the next slide, you know, 
it's fine talking about all these things, but what you really need also is a single pane of glass. You need that single lens that's designed to provide you with the visibility into specific areas. Um, it'll enable you to you know, review process coverage, your automation coverage, but it also identifies opportunities to optimize and to drive automation at scale. Whether you're focused on process um, understanding and pulling together a 360 degree view of your processes by, by leveraging um, you know, human capture, process mining, um, automation, and even RPA, bringing that together and being able to you know, reflect that in a, in, a, in a dashboard, for want of a better term, um, you know, specific to the, the functional area or the executive um, that's, that's viewing that or reviewing that particular part of the business. Um, you know, having, having a dashboard will help to ensure that you can prioritize and you can implement and deliver the ROI that your business expects. And when we think about ROI, um, I mentioned at the start that it's absolutely critical. You know, many organizations today are expecting an ROI to be delivered within the first year so that they can maximize um, reinvestment of, of cash into other areas for optimization next year. Uh, the final slide that I wanted to just go through was, you know, it's fine having a dashboard, but what does that really show me? Um, and I think to be able to drive automation at scale, you know, having process visibility that enables an organization to drive change, whether it's a cultural change, um, to innovate, or whether it's just to make you know, improvements on a continuous basis. Being able to drill down um, into a process area to see where some of those inefficiencies are um, is also important. You don't want, again, have to go off to a different, um, different solution. Um, this is where, you know, when we look at this information, we find that both the business and the IT organizations come together. They can both understand um, you know, what they're looking at. They can both challenge you know, the, the current thinking and they can actually drive and innovate it in a much faster way. You know, I'll, I'll, put, I'll pause on this slide because what I'd like to do now is actually to hand over to Leslie who can talk to us and give us some more context about what is, what is the automation fabric. So Leslie, over to yourself. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, that was a really in-depth view into automation and process understanding. It's it's funny. It's usually my job to get down among the weeds, but uh, since you've given us such a such an incredibly detailed presentation, let me just add a few ideas. Let me take sort of this bird's eye view, right? So uh, if you can go to the next slide, um, I, I thought I'd just kind of bookend or already start this presentation here with this image of this is essentially the Woolwich Arsenal which closed down somewhere in the 1960s but which had really been around all the way since uh, you know the 1600s and which sort of saw the transition between the industrial and the modern eras and the reason why i have it here is because when we talk about sort of this march of technology we tend to often talk about things in terms of you know massive shifts like industrial revolutions and sort of these generational shifts and these days it's in it's kind of in vogue to talk about the fourth industrial revolution right sort of the the, this mystical idea that symbolizes sort of this convergence of technologies like artificial intelligence and advanced robotics and you know these things that blur the physical with the digital and presumably the transformative impact these will have in our world interestingly enough we are seeing many of these transformative shifts actually go on uh, they're underway as we speak i uh, probably should not be mentioning this but um, many of you in the audience have must be must have been amazed with things like you know chat gpt and the new bing ai and how you know uncannily real and in some cases even uh, in the case of bing obviously uncannily subversive uh, these conversations with ai applications have been over the last few weeks um, of uh, of these these things coming into the public consciousness but underneath all these i think what we are really observing uh, is this process of uh, a sort of a generational shift again that has literally occurred multiple times now in our in our lifetimes where the frontiers of digital as we know it have quite radically shifted over the course of the past decade and a half. Um, and when I say that, I mean, you can move to the next slide, but I actually mean, you know, the future of automation is not just the future of automation, but sort of the future of digital itself, because what we are moving towards, what we have moved towards over the past 
you know, seven or eight years is away from, as you described, piecemeal automations to now this large scale transformation of how organizations think of their processes. And we've seen this great convergence of automation technologies where, you know, back in 2017 or 2016, even we at Forrester were advising our clients to keep different automation technologies sort of in their own, in their own swim lane, so to speak. But now we are seeing RPA, DPA, low code, process intelligence, data driven automation, and even slowly, uh, but surely physical robotics and all these things come together. And in fact, we're just, in some sense, we are, even though AI has been around for a while, we're just kind of getting started down that AI journey. So imagine with everything that Lawrence just covered, how your processes might end up looking when machine intelligence comes in and it can understand the content and the context of your workflows and it's supported by process mining at scale, delivering sort of this, this call it whole business observability, if you will, right? This real time view into how your processes are getting executed and how they're connecting up to your business results and being able to kind of bring an AI at the right time to plug in the gaps or figure out how, you know, alternative paths can be handled and so on. And in fact, when we think about how we will go down this path, we actually see a new form of digital disruptor emerge out of all these technologies converging and coming together and co-evolving. And we call this kind of company uh, the autonomous enterprise because these kinds of companies are the ones that will be built inside out with automation. They will have, as I said, processes that are inherently self-correcting, self-learning and driven by real-time intelligence and automation. So uh, if you can move to the next slide. Now, if you think about how this trend converges with some other things, right? So if you think about so the support around this, even over the course of the pandemic, we have seen companies very directly move from a tactical to a strategic focus in terms of the way that they've approached uh, automation. And I represent this on a chart, something like this, where you know many companies have in, in the last few years sort of moved from the left to the right of this chart. So back before the pandemic, automation was all largely about cost takeout and you know effort rationalization and so on. And then during the pandemic, it became more about risk and business continuity. But over time, what we are starting to realize is that automation is really nothing short of kind of this model for us to be able to drive future fitness, as we call it, throughout the enterprise, which means three things, right? To improve our adaptiveness, to be able to rapidly reconfigure uh, sort of core business concepts in response to emerging opportunities and changes in the business environment, to enhance the, the creativity of our people by em enabling them and empowering them to pivot from sort of execution to innovation, and to increase enterprise resilience so we can manage uh, things like risk in, in a better, more elegant fashion. Um, and so this is kind of where the dots begin to connect, if you can move to the next slide, because as these technologies sort of converge, automation within the enterprise is starting to take on a certain sort of a certain cadence, a certain rhythm, right? And the best organizations are looking at all these converging technologies and starting to use them to kind of run automation and process transformation as you know, uh, side by side sort of programs in some sense, running this loop to to discover and analyze processes, to document them in, in systematic and consistent ways across the organization, and then to standardize where feasible, to re-engineer where required, and then to transform using automation. And so just think about it for a second, this is in some sense the core ethos of this concept that we've been calling the automation fabric. It's really, how do you take this idea, this kind of this loop of, of process insights and insights driven optimization and automation, and how do you convert it into something that's actionable, that's real, and that you can actually begin to use today within your enterprise or put together today within your company? So that's what the automation fabric is, if you can move to the next slide, is that in some sense, it is it is the the, the technology substrate that allows uh, you as an enterprise to apply this process insight loop across your value streams, across your operating model. So it looks kind of like this at a conceptual level, but essentially think about it from the bottom to the top, right? So the base layer, what you have is you have your applications, which I think Lawrence, you spoke about ERP systems um, as one example. We at Forrester really don't believe that this term enterprise resource planning uh, really, which is probably decades old at this point, has relevance anymore because many modern ERP systems themselves are in the process of transforming 
themselves into into sort of digital operating platforms right and these digital operating platforms themselves are making some sort of bid to become viable automation fabrics by enabling more and more capabilities that essentially tie into automation and automated workflows but the idea is that you know that itself is kind of a, lo a longer topic for discussion but the idea is that these enterprise applications they connect to your processes which are being constantly now in this kind of automation fabric being scrutinized with process intelligence at the core and these connect further upwards to a collection of automations that uh, that are modular that are heterogeneous in terms of the technologies that they are built from you know you see a, a few names here apis bpm rpa all these interchangeably coming together uh, to be able to drive uh, you know drive these automations and combine with each other really and so all of this is really very versatile in terms of the personas that these automations serve. Think of citizen developers, citizen data scientists, pro devs, um, and then the interaction models that you're able to support. So conversational AI, sensors from Internet of Things and so on. And maybe tomorrow, who knows where else we'll go, right? So Web3 constructs, for example, or uh, you know other, other ideas that we are just starting to wrap our head around. So what all this really does is it lends itself to composability. So in some sense, what, what where you end up is, of course, you have a technology landscape, you have a tech stack, but automation itself starts to become, uh, in some sense, the application. And so it is also kind of future ready in terms of, you know, tomorrow physical robotics becomes a thing. You can integrate, you know, a drone delivery or a, uh, you know, physical robot that's flipping burgers into a digital workflow. Well, you can do it now because this is not so much a rigid superstructure as it is a, a loose mesh, a modular sort of connected, interconnected mesh where you can actually plug in like Lego blocks and add, you know, capabilities as they emerge to the fabric. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, this is kind of, uh, again, to connect it back to where we started, right? We spoke about the fourth industrial revolution, um, this is where we where that idea truly stands a chance to get democratized as more and more companies begin to shift sort of their outlook from thinking of automation not as tactical but really more fundamental uh, to digital transformation so that's the the idea but having said all of this i should also mention that this shift is going to be hard right like think about back in 2010 you couldn't walk out as an enterprise and buy yourself a digital platform to convert your you know entire company overnight into a digital enterprise a digitally mature organization and if you take that analogy today you can't just walk out and buy yourself an automation fabric you have to build it you have to sort of compose it out of all the foundational elements which on their own are also along their evolutionary path so in some sense you have to figure it out for yourself um, as you go along and you can kind of build parts of it and you know continue down that roadmap but the punchline and this is the important idea right is that and this is where kind of all of a sudden the whole you know once you get this the whole uh, framing of this conversation changes is that just as the last generation of uh, of digital as we as we knew it saw digital disruptors or digital natives who emerged and you know just embraced digital through and through and went on to sort of upend entire traditional business models and industries just like that in this generation we will see companies uh, that will get automation right that will manage to weave sort of automation fabrics across their entire processes and value chains and these uh, these companies as they emerge and as they get better and better they will just really obliterate their competition so that's why this is important and that's why it's important to start thinking about how you will approach your automation fabric today as opposed to three years down or five years down when when some of the shakeout will have already happened um so next slide so uh you know i just wanted to close here i don't usually like to throw you know, lists of technology at my audience. But in this case, it, this is just more to sort of illustrate all the technologies that are available today that are kind of coming together. Uh, you know, this is stuff that you, you're you investing in today, right? If you're, this is obviously, this is a, a bit specific to BFSI, but you can take out some of the domain specific apps and put in some of the, uh, the applications and software that you use in your industry. And what you will see is that, you know, this is a broad collection of technologies that is already probably something that you're investing in today, but these are coming together. And increasingly, as you think about kind of building your automation fabric for the future, you know, with all of the investments that you're making in modernization and APIs and, uh, you know, services and so on, 
you are already in some sense on that path towards building your automation fabric. So you, it's not like, you know, all is lost. You are at a point where if you've been investing in a sustained and systematic and intelligent fashion and digitization over the, over the years, over the last several years, even before the pandemic, then it already puts you at a place where you can, you know, start thinking about all of these things that you've invested in, all of these technologies that you have, uh, you know, that you've you've uh, invested in, as coming together and forming a part of that, you know, the journey that you need to go uh, traverse to get to the automation fabric. So uh, that's all I had in terms of uh, slides. Uh, back to you, Austin, uh, to take us into Q and A. Great. Um, yeah. Um, thanks, ever. Thanks, guys. Um, We've, we've got plenty of time here for a few questions. Um, and I think, Lawrence, I think you got those questions. And if you and Leslie just want to kind of uh, work through whoever, whoever is uh, appropriate to answer either one. So, Lawrence? Yeah, so um, we've, we've had a couple, um, couple questions come in. Um, and one of the things that we did actually prior to um, you know, um, setting up this webinar was to talk to some of our so, talk to some of our customers who will also be joining us for an advisory board in a few weeks. Um, one of the key questions that came um, came back was you know, for you, Leslie, which is around, you know, what are the major challenges in um, adopting the automation fabric or an automation fabric? Well, I think several, right? So I think the first bit is in, uh, it starts right at the, at the top. It comes to, kind of comes down to the commitment that the company has, the organization has towards transformation and how much of that kind of commitment uh, is supported by this belief that, you know, automation is foundational. So when we talk about uh, about automation in some sense, what, one of the things that I didn't mention here when I was presenting is this idea that, you know, we've gone through an S-curve of digital, right? The last 10, 12 years of digital transformation, we've gone through the phase where kind of the curve went parabolic and then now you know around just around the time before maybe a year or so before the pandemic we started to see that flattening out in terms of kind of you started to see get to a point where every dollar that you spent on digital was delivering less and less uh, in terms of ROI in terms of differentiation in terms of actually propelling you ahead uh, in your markets and then automation came along and as kind of that you know, momentum snowballed. Now we are at a point where we where we're starting to see that automation is essentially that new S curve, which is building upon the old one and taking you again through that. You know, the the opportunity of of that parabolic growth rate across the industry and across industries that embrace and companies that embrace automation. Uh, this is a message that is not in a lot of cases well understood. Just like you know, when at the dawn of digital, many companies didn't kind of get digital and understand how transformative it was going to be and therefore kind of didn't align themselves around digital it's kind of the same uh, journey all over again instead what we see uh, is that many companies have invested in automation but they are kind of in these piecemeal these silos we we've got we have many you know funny ways to express this in forestry, we call them random acts of automation. We call them, you know, islands of automation just existing all over the, you know, the sea of the organization, completely disconnected from each other. The need to kind of A, set the vision, set the charter, and then B, bring all of these islands together into a cohesive uh, corporate strategy around automation and around automation fuel transformation um, is one of the biggest uh, gaps and challenges um, that we have today. Uh, the second, I think, is 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 a certain level of systems thinking uh, in terms of you know, as I said, this is th these are all different technologies with different maturity cycles and different stages that they are in in terms of their long term evolution and you know how they will interestingly co evolve, right? So uh, being able to think about these uh, in a way that is kind of forward thinking and that goes beyond what you have today and thinks about what it can be. How do you reimagine your business as an autonomous enterprise, right? If you're a bank, if you're a retailer, what, what does that future look like? And what's the, you know, given all this confusion in some sense of technologies and marketing messages out there and what have you, how do you kind of bring all of this together and actually create a, a consistent uh, roadmap that can take you from here to there? That requires a certain amount of organizational thought and executive vision which also is something that uh, that needs to be evolved that needs to come together in many of these uh, many organizations 
thanks, Roger. That was a, you know, you know, a, you know, a deep answer. Um, I'm sure that's you know, something that will really help people to think about the fact that you know, the nature of, I guess, the nature of the beast is that a lot of organizations are starting from a piecemeal state. Um, and that's it, how we bring that stuff together. Um, you know, one of the um, one of the questions that you know that also come up is you know um, if I'm if I'm building an automation fabric, uh, what should I be thinking about from a technology perspective? Um, and I think that you know certainly you know from 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 my perspective, you know, we see work self as the connected tissue. Um, you know, and when we say that is we see it as the core enabler for organisations to adopt that automation fabric. Um, yeah, some of those must-haves, I think, you know, when people start thinking about the, the technology stack or the technology that they're, they're putting together, um, it's how can I engage all the um, stakeholders in an organization, both from a business and IT perspective? And the first thing that comes to mind is you need a no-code solution. You know, low-code, no-code, um, ideally no-code. Why? Because you can collaborate more easily, um, more easily with both the tech team and the non-tech team to collaborate and drive um, improvement. Um, we think about, you know, to a point you made that organizations have already invested, Leslie, you know, we think that having an API first approach means that companies can, um, you know, take advantage of those and harness those IT investments that they've already had. So for example, with, with process intelligence um, as part of our collective automation platform, the ability to ingest data from Salona, so from a process mining capability, to help augment your already um, you know, content rich information from a process intelligence, being able to pull in process mining data. If you have an API first strategy, you can leverage some of these other tools. Um, yeah, and then when you couple that with, with human task mining um, and automation, you can pull together that, that broad view, that complete view, 360 degree view of your, of your process landscape and then be able to reuse that data downstream. It'll be the same for RPA tools and others. One of the other pieces, we've already talked about AI. Um, organizations have a, a wealth of information. Being able to draw those insights, um, and as you, as you said in your slides, it's, you know, it's injecting the intelligence and the, in that process, absolutely critical. But I think when you look at the, you know, an automation fabric, you know, you want to be able to reuse as much as possible without having to re redo it downstream, and that, and I, I and I say that I, I think that's probably the the foundation is that you know it's it's reusable. You don't it provides resilience, time to value, and speed of execution. Um, Absolutely, and that reusability goes hand in hand with. Composability, which is kind of anyway the way most modern um, technology stacks are being um, uh, architected. Yeah. Um, so one of, one of the other questions that came in, um, which you you, you may be going to help with here, is yeah, you know, how is this really different from hyper auto? Yeah, hyper automation. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I think. Um, few years ago when these terms right intelligent automation hyper automation were starting to kind of show up one of the big struggles that we at Forrester kind of had with these terms was that they seemed to be kind of less of a philosophy and more like this constant and ever evolving mosaic of technologies that just you know something you came up on the horizon and okay that's also hyper automation or that's also I, in fact, um, we had done what we call a tech tide back then. It was kind of this, this specific research instrument that we had to just try and understand, you know, here's a term, what's, what fits in it. And we identified some 19 different technologies that uh, could uh, have been or, or should have been kind of, you know, connected to this idea of intelligent automation. The funny thing was that each of these, a lot of these technologies were in their own rights kind of on their own independent trajectories uh, outside of, you know, outside of automations. It was very difficult to bounder, you know, set boundaries around what this definition actually 
you know, really meant at some point it was, I, I remember just RPA plus some amount of document intelligence or IDP as, as they're calling it now. And then it became, oh, it's R, RPA plus IDP plus here's process mining. And that's also kind of, you know, <laughs> hyper automation or intelligent automation. So, you know, it was just, you know, every new technology uh, that just came about, every new flash in the pan was just now a part of the definition as, you know, it evolved. Um, what these definitions did not really do besides describe a bunch of technologies that just existed side by side was to really provide sort of a roadmap to automation that was really independent of whatever the latest you know shiny object was but right but but kind of a way to get from here to there it didn't really sort of connect the dots between sort of the the evolution and the convergence of technology on one end and on the other if you remember my slide where i asked you know the answer to the question why do we automate what hyper automation intelligent automation, all these terms kind of failed to do, and they're still good terms to kind of express and explain kind of this this space in a very, you know, porous sort of way. But what they failed to do is to really connect these dots and look at automation primarily as a digital transformation imperative with a, a focus on having a distinct roadmap and a direction and a strategy and an approach to get from here to there with a with, a, with an end state in mind, which is which is really the autonomous enterprise. And so there are like several sub themes that the automation fabric concept teases out of this. And each of this is kind of a whole research stream for us, which doesn't exist within the uh, hyper automation slash IA world. Like for example, if you start talking about, you know, what should the automation, the organizational structures be that you build around, you know, uh, creating this sort of automation fabric construct and driving towards a uh, transformation fueled by automation. What are what should the executive charters be? What kind of new leadership do you need? I, I've written in the past a lot about uh, this idea of the chief automation officer. It's been something that people have idly discussed for years and years, but what does it really mean in the context of a modern automation strategy centered on automation fabrics, right? One of the things that I'm looking at right now is the conversation around value. So we're used to, and that's probably a much larger discussion, but we are so used to talking about automation value at a tactical level. We are always talking about, you know, FT reductions or this really funny, funny concept called you know, that we that we call hours returned to the business. All right, so you returned hours to the business. What did the business do with those hours, and how did the whatever the business did with those hours connect back up to the stuff that your CEO cares about, right? Profitability, revenue growth, um, risk. Um, so these are threads that actually require a lot more in-depth conversation and guidance um, around you know, how do you get from here to there because you're talking about no less than enterprise transformation. And I don't think a lot of these themes actually come under the, the definitions of uh, everything that we, we discussed here, hyper automation, IA, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, thanks. No, that's a good point. I mean, we talk about you know, Pete Steele, we, you, know, you mentioned some of these other areas. Um, yeah, also going back to you know, um, islands of automation, um, all those different you know, terms, I think it's, 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 it's brought us to where we are today, quite frankly, right? It's like, okay, now I have all these things, how do I bring this all together and see this in an end-to-end -end way, both from a business and IT, per, you know, IT perspective? Um, the, the last question before we kind of, I guess, open up, um, and it, it, I guess it's two part, you know, one is that, you know, when people think about piecemeal and they think about automation, um, you know, many organizations you know, ask me, actually, you know, am I too early? Am I not ready yet because I'm not mature enough? Um, when you think about or, from talking to your, um, your customers around organization maturity, what, do you, what are the, the, the real misconceptions executives have regarding their own process maturity? Well, I think we were discussing some some of the one of the sub themes around this before we started this webinar, and I was commenting about how you know you you were being over generous. I think process maturity in most companies is is abysmal. Um, there's a long way to go, and in fact, part of the whole conversation that I think modern process mining and process intelligence tools are kind of forcing upon executives is this idea that look you have you know fundamentally what you need when you think you need an automation program what you actually need even before or in parallel with your automation program is a process transformation program but 
we've kind of uh, and part of it is just legacy right over the last several years we've been so mired in um in some of the traditional process thinking and you know lean and six sigma and things like that which obviously you know has its place in the world but uh, at this point we are at this at the cusp of this this transformation and the way that we think about processes because now we have real time data we can create you know process digital twins we can analyze processes in terms of kind of how they get how they're getting executed we can see sort of those you know tube map style images of how our processes are going right or wrong where they are going wrong how they crisscross you know our organization our work workforce our technology landscape and so on it opens up a whole new way uh, a whole new kind of class of enterprise uh, insight in some sense uh, that executives should take note of at this point and so um, it's really just trying to rethink your company and the way you work your business model your value streams in the context of all the this all this fascinating new technology that is emerging and then connecting again go back to connecting the dots right connecting the dots between all of this insight that's coming in and all of the evolution that's happening on the ai and automation side how do you bring all of that together so really just stop thinking about things in in like you know in, in piecemeal ways and really start taking advantage of all of the technology and all of the capabilities that are that are out there to start reorienting your thinking around um, you know concepts like the automation fabric thank you okay um yeah Austin, should we open it up for questions from um, those on the on the webinar today? I don't know if we have enough time to really dive into anything else today, but um, we'll we'll make sure that we we engage with any remaining questions. Um, other than that, do either of y'all have any any other things you would like to share before we wrap up? I'll offer to you, Leslie, to start. If you have anything else you'd like to impart. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I think um, thanks for uh, for inviting me. I think this is definitely a very interesting conversation. I, for me, you know, the big takeaway here is, um, or the big lead behind here is that you know we all, all of us who you know who are executives making decisions whether in IT or business, uh, really have to start reframing our approach to automation because it's nothing short of. <clears throat> of of kind of the next evolution of digital in some sense and that's a big one because you know everything else that we talk about is kind of how do we get from here to there but you need to know where you're headed you need to have a a sense of what your company would look like five years down or eight years down in the context of kind of this radical automation revolution that we are uh, that we are facing down right now thank you and i think yeah um yeah i, I think what underpins that is that yeah you know, that organizations organizations need to start yeah you know, before they do something yeah you know, before they you know kick off a major exercise a major transformation as you've mentioned before you know you know, almost like go through a process transformation it's it's getting your house in order if you know where your starting point is then it means an organization can really just focus on what it's going to take to get where they need to go um, without you know without having to you know almost like navigate their way blindly um and yeah you know, certainly from one of our one of one of our customers in the past who mobilized a large-scale transformation paused after about six months why because they a they felt it was taking too long and b it was a case of let's just go back and really understand our process if we know where we are it's much easier to navigate and then bring these solutions um these capabilities as you, as you call for the for the automation fabric together to help accelerate you know bring visibility um and quite frankly get there faster awesome great well thank you lawrence and thank you again leslie and um yeah thanks everyone for joining us this morning for this webinar um we hope you gained some valuable insights you can apply to your own your organization and begin building your own automation fabric so uh until next time um thanks again thank, thank you, you.